extend a, a warm invitation to our colleagues and friends from Hartford. Welcome to Edenton, and we're happy to be with you at this soon to be historic time for our communities as we enter an era when our electric rates are going to be far more competitive than they have been in over 30 years. So this is exciting stuff. Glad y'all uh, can be with us for this combined meeting. Um, we have an agenda. Um, simply stated, um, as the host, I'll call the meeting together on behalf of the Edenton Town Council. Mayor Reed, if you would do the same uh, for the Hertford Town Council, and then we'll uh, get underway. All right. Call the meeting to order for the Edenton Town Council at this special meeting, uh, Wednesday, May 13th. I call this meeting to order. Uh, members are here. We'll like him one. He was unable to make it, so therefore we do have a quorum. We can continue with our meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Um, at this point, we will now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, um, led by Mayor Reed. And following that, uh, Councilman Ely will lead us in an invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Our Father, we ask you to be with us and guide us tonight as we go through this very important meeting. Lead us to do your will and do the very best we can for both of our times and for Northeastern North Carolina and for North Carolina. And Lord, we pray that you'll bless both towns and all thy residents. And Lord, we lift up a special prayer to our servicemen in foreign fields, we ask you to protect them and bring them home to us as soon as possible. By that name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you both. Um, we will now hear from our two managers as a briefing before I introduce our guests for this evening. So, Anne Marie, if you would lead, please. And uh, after that, Brandon, if you would follow through. Mayor, um, I have, and I, I think Brandon also has very brief remarks that we wanted to start this meeting off. Um, we're grateful for the opportunity for Graham Edwards to be with us tonight. Graham and his team, as you know, um, because we've been keeping you posted, has been working incredibly hard um, over the last year and a half negotiating the terms of, this, uh, of these very complex deals. Um, Brandon and I are um, both on the East, uh, North Carolina Eastern Municipal Power Agency Board of Commissioners, and we also serve on the Power Agency's Rate Committee. Um, and we have attended many, many meetings over the last year and a half and have participated in um, a lot of spirited um, but thoughtful discussions amongst the board, um, a lot of questions um, posed to, to Graham and his team by us and by our colleagues. Um, I think the thing that I um, take away from that event the most is it was not only the managers asking questions, but there are a number of elected officials who serve on the board, and they were asking really smart questions. Um, but we are at the point where um, you're going to have to be making you know, some major decisions. Um, Brandon and I talked early on about the, even though we have the utmost respect and confidence in the work and the skills that Graham and his team have, we felt given the enormity of the um, deal that it would be wise for the governing bodies to have an independent consultant review the proposed agreements. And um, this, all of this um, work has accelerated over the last few months for, for very good reasons, and that's all going to end up helping us save hopefully even more money. But the um, 
Council's just received the report on Monday from the consultant. Uh, I know Brandon reviewed that with um, his elected officials at their meeting earlier this week. Uh, I've not had that opportunity to do with, with my mayor and council, um, but we will do that on May 26. Um, I was impressed with the um, report. The consultant had, um, he came to us with um, over 35 years of experience. He worked um, in the utility industry, serving utilities. He worked for a national firm, R.W. Beck, which is a well-known consulting firm. He has extensive background in analyzing utility rates from the wholesale um, purchase power perspective. And then he also has um, experience in producing economic feasibility studies. So we felt that he had the right skill set to review these agreements on your behalf. Um, his, the summary of his report, when I opened it, you sort of had, you cringe, you hope, I hope this is gonna, you know, this is all gonna be good stuff. And he, um, he thought that the um, proposed agreement provided the economic benefits um, that were, that are stated that you're gonna go over tonight, that it will, the deal will help us be more competitive with our rates over the next 10 years. And he said it's, it's impossible to quantify this, but it's, not, it's very important not to lose sight of the fact that by us no longer being invested in Duke's nuclear generation assets, that relieves us of future risk, um, ownership risk in um, power plants and in decommissioning. And that shifts all of that responsibility all of that liability to Duke and their, their rate payers. And again, it is very difficult to quantify the value of that. Um, so with that, um, I'll turn it over to Brandon and he's gonna talk about the, the legal aspects and how we're working together. Yeah, um, first, Graham, uh, thank you for being here. I know that you're missing the uh, legislative reception that uh, Electric Cities is having in Raleigh tonight. I love me here. <laughs> well, we, really, uh, we really appreciate you being here with us to talk to the two boards. Um, and, and Mayor and Council, uh, on behalf of our council, I really appreciate y'all allowing us to do this jointly and also allowing us, uh, me and Anne Marie, to, to do a lot of the behind the scenes work jointly as well. It's probably saved us both towns quite a bit of money. Uh, we, we're fortunate that um, we share the same attorneys, uh, Hood Ellis with Edenton and Ben Gallup for Hertford. Also, Andrew Howell, uh, one of their partners, has been working on the contract review at this point. And we don't have it tonight, but uh, I, 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 you know, I, don't, I don't think we're going to have any problems. Um, it's just like what uh, Mr. Pender's report to y'all says, um, it kind of validates everything that we thought that this deal was going to be. And uh, it, it speaks highly of Graham's team and the work they've done so far. Um, I'm just excited to be a part of this. I mean, it's, this is a very um, special time for both towns and, and all of the power agency members in this part of the state. And um, every one of y'all should be very proud of what's going on and um, what's about to happen. Okay, thank you both. Um, now we will get our program underway with the meat and potatoes part. Uh, Graham, welcome to Edenton for this joint session with <clears throat> Hertford and Edenton uh, governing bodies to enlighten us a little further on the sale of the uh, generation assets that you and your team have worked so hard to bring to fruition. Uh, I've always believed that the greater the challenge, uh, the, the greater the need for strong, aggressive leadership. And you and your team have brought that to Electric Cities at the opportune time. And uh, that combined with some increase in value of the assets after coming out of a rough period of decline, uh, it, it made for an opportunity. Your team seized it. and. You've been very upfront with us. We've had numerous meetings in the interim uh, telling us where you were with the uh, process and how receptive and challenging it was working with uh, our new owners. But nevertheless, the work got done and we, we all commend you for it and our citizens are looking forward to enjoying uh, some more competitive rates 
going forward. So we jokingly said in the past that we got out Lloyd the first time, but I don't think it happened this go around. And uh, we've got exit ramps and all kinds of good stuff built into this thing. So thanks again. We look forward to your program. Thank you. Mayor, uh, Mayor Reed, Mayor Vaughn, thank you all very much for allowing me to be here. And um, uh, uh, council members and, and commissioners, thank you all for taking time and, and having this special meeting. Uh, I, 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 for one, appreciate you coming together and doing this jointly. Um, and uh, I think that uh, the, the proximity of, of your towns and uh, the issues that you have that you're able to share, that you heard, I think it really does bring a lot of synergies for both of you. And before I get started, I'd just like to make a comment, if I may, um, to both mayors and to members of the council and commissioners. Um, the Eastern Agency Board of Commissioners comprised of 32 members, one, uh, one from each member, uh, each, each town, each city. Uh, you appoint uh, your commissioners. And Anne Marie from Edenton and Brandon from, from Hereford, uh, I count my blessings every day for those two, okay? Uh, their leadership in this process and throughout my whole tenure here has really been a, a value for me and I've, I've cherished that and I appreciate it. I just want to say to them publicly, thank you very much for, for all your support, uh, but also for your unwavering leadership. Okay? Uh, this deal would not, would not be to fruition. We would not be where we are without their involvement and their leadership um, as we went through this process. So, so thank you very much. Okay? Um, if I may... Um, I will go through the presentation. Uh, please stop me if you have questions. I'll be glad to address anything. If I'm not making myself clear, please throw something at me or whatever, and I will make sure that I do, my, I do better for you, okay? Um, just like anything else, projections, you know, everything you're going to see is based on projections. And uh, projections will change from time to time. But we have basically, since over the last 18 months, the projections really have not changed all that much. They've changed a little bit up, down, or whatever. Uh, but all in all, the deal is still the same as we saw about 18 months ago. What we're asking is that y'all consider, uh, not tonight, but you consider approval of the sale of the assets in which the Eastern Asset has ownership in with, uh, and back to Duke Progress. And in order to accomplish that, we need you to, uh, to approve three things. We need you to approve the termination of our current contract, we need you to approve a all requirements power supply agreement between the Eastern Power Agency and your respective towns. And also we need you to approve a what's called a debt service support contract that I'll explain in just a moment. This is the purpose of what I want to talk to you about, is what these contracts are, what they do for you, and what the economic analysis is of this deal. Our goal always has been to provide, provide the lowest cost power and the most reliable power that we can for you. Um, as we look at, at what this deal provides us an opportunity to do, um, first of all, you know, I, I've heard from y'all. I, I, Mayor, I remember the first time I came and in, in, in chatted with you, how can we reduce our rates? And I visited with every city in the East as members of Eastern Power Agency and that has been a consistent message. What are we going to do about reducing our rates, becoming more competitive, and giving some relief to our residents and our commercial customers? This deal does that because if you think about it, it will uh, allow us to reduce our rates, but also it will allow us to uh, continue providing a reliable power supply. And you'll see that that, that, that is important because back in the 70s and the early 80s, that, that was also a key issue. Um, second thing is that we can become more competitive, and, and you know, r rates are, are relative. We'll be able to reduce our rates, but when we reduce them, we also become competitive, and we'll be competitive long term. In addition, it's long term economic benefits, short term and long term, as you will see, and also reduce risk. Anne Marie mentioned, and I have not seen that report that she mentioned. Uh, I'm glad that y'all commissioned that report. Uh, I commend you for doing that. Uh, not everybody uh, did that, um, but I, I, com I commend you for, for going that, that extra step just to make sure that you've done your due diligence. One, one thing I heard Anne-Marie say is that it reduces the long-term nuclear risk. When you think about it, nuclear units have to be decommissioned 
at the end of their license, they have to be taken out of service and taken back to Greenfield site, and that is expensive. In fact, it's projected that when Harris and the units are decommissioned, it'll be about $2 billion. Now, the decommissioning liability on Harris runs until the year 2088. That's a long time. <clears throat> so even after the license is gone, if we had not sold these assets and something went wrong in 2060, you're still on the hook for it. But with this deal, you're not on the hook for it anymore. That was a major issue that we had to consider in this deal. Um, we can immediately reduce our annual debt service payments by almost 80%. And you'll see the, the actual numbers here in just a minute. Which will reduce, uh, produce a 16% reduction in wholesale power cost immediately. Day one, if this deal closes June 30th, your wholesale power cost that we start billing you July 1 will be reduced by 16% from where it is today. Let me just kind of go back in time just a little bit. Um, not very far, but between 2010 and early 2013, we have been discussing with Duke Progress. Uh, in fact, when I, when I came here six years ago uh, to Electric Cities, one of the first things I did is um, my team and I, we got together and we approached Duke uh, Progress at that time about buying the assets back. And Bill Johnson, I'll never forget, August 10th, 2010, he sent me a letter in response to my request about them looking at this deal. And he said that he, that he and his staff had looked at it and that they were unable to find a way for them to buy the assets back that was beneficial for their shareholders, their customers, and our members at that time. Now, I wasn't sure what at that time meant until in January of 2011, an announcement was made that Duke and Progress were merging started connecting the dots, okay? So immediately after closing of the deal, the first chance I had, I went and sat down with Jim Rogers uh, after Bill Johnson got removed as chairman and CEO of the combined company. I've known Jim for 20 plus years as well. So I sat down with him and, and said, you know, we've been having these discussions. Are you willing to continue looking at it? He said, absolutely. So in November of 2013, it took a while, um, they came back to us with an indicative order, uh, offer of interest to buy the assets and they would supply us with a long-term power supply agreement. So we started negotiating and frankly from 2013 uh, uh, through July 2014 it really was just a, a, a negotiation day in and day out. You know negotiations are always interesting. Uh, I always have the opinion that if you don't walk away from the table at least once you probably hadn't negotiated hard enough. So we, we negotiated pretty hard as did they. Um, we came up with, with an a agreement that we thought was fair and equitable. It was fair and equitable for them. So it was a win-win for us and it was a win for Eastern North Carolina. On July the 28th, uh, my board, the Eastern Agency uh, Board of Commissioners and Duke Progress is, uh, Board of Directors approved the deal. We entered into the agreement and also in um, uh, both boards approved it. And then in October, Duke filed with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, because FERC has to approve the asset sale as well as the full requirements power supply agreement. Before the filing was made, uh, several of us went up and met with the FERC commissioners. You got to do it beforehand because once you file, you can't, you can't meet with them. Um, so we sat down and went over it with them. And um, uh, we didn't know exactly how they're going to respond, but in December, um, December the 9th, we got an order out of FERC, which was a lot sooner than what we expected. Frankly, we didn't think it was going to come out until spring of this year. We got an early Christmas present. And it was an unconditional order. They approved the asset sale. They approved the long-term power supply agreement. Unconditional. Which, ladies and gentlemen, I, I've been before FERC a lot, and that is really unheard of. Okay? So we were very pleased to get that early Christmas present. Also, um, I think March the 17th <coughs> is when both chambers of the legislature introduced the legislation to authorize this sale. We had to get legislation because we got, we're not going to get enough money to pay off all the bonds. So we're going to have to have another bond issue, and you'll see that in just a minute. But 
once the project is gone and the project is the assets, then we ain't got any, any way to issue bonds because we could only issue bonds for the project. Okay? So we had to have legislation as Duke had to have some legislation. That legislation was introduced March the 17th. A by April the 2nd, the governor was signing that piece of legislation. Two weeks and two days, the legislation was introduced, went through the House, went through the Senate, and the governor signed it. Virtually unheard of. What that says to me, and it speaks volumes, is that everybody sees that this really is a good deal for eastern North Carolina throughout the state. Um, just to remind you, these are the assets uh, that, that, that y'all uh, are, are involved with and the Eastern Power Agency owns on your behalf. As, as you know, uh, the Harris Nuclear Facility outside of Raleigh, the two units at the Brundrick Nuclear Facility um, uh, in Southport, uh, the Mayo and Roxboro coal-fired plants. Now these coal-fired plants are some of the cleanest burning coal-fired plants in the country. They already have the SOX and the NOX and those uh, those particulates being being removed. So uh, they're, they're good units, um, but these are the assets that we bought into back in the 80s, and that we're in the process now of trying to resell back to Duke Progress. Let me just talk to you just a minute about what the transaction is. Um, Duke Progress has agreed to pay us $1.2 billion for the assets. Um, that includes the, the, the rights and all the titles to the assets that you just saw. Um, in addition, we have to transfer, or let, me, let me start again. A nuclear unit in this country, regardless of where it is and who owns it, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission requires you to put up each year a certain amount of money into an escrow fund that is invested, but is controlled by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission for future decommissioning cost. Today it's about 260 to $270 million in that fund that fund is required to go with the units. The NRC requires that. In addition, there's about $26 million on our balance sheet that we had specifically earmarked for decommissioning, so that will go with the units as well. Also, the spare parts, the nuclear fuel we have no, no use for anymore, the coal stockpile we have no use for anymore. So the $1.2 billion is the price and the check they're gonna cut to us at closing, and that, this, this is what uh, they get in return. Now, this third bullet here, DEP will assume all liabilities incurred after closing. If it were not for that one item, I wouldn't be sitting here for you today. That was probably the, the, the most contentious negotiating item that we had. Uh, they did not want to assume the liabilities before a 10 year period after closing. And, um, uh, and we said no. You've been operating these assets for 30 years. Why won't you take the liabilities? Ultimately, they agreed to it. It did cost us probably a couple months in, the, um, in time uh, through negotiations. But again, had we not gotten this, this particular item right here, I would not have recommended to my board and to y'all that we enter into this agreement. But this has been done, and it is accomplished. Graham, could I ask yes, a sir. question on that middle point? Yes, sir. Um, now that you've transferred the uh, reserves, um, the escrow over to DEP, does that in any way create more cash flow for, for you to use going forward? Because I'm assuming you would make annual contributions to that, which you no longer have to do. That, that, that is correct. Is so it much money it, or just a little bit? No, um, right now we, we I want to say it's around, um, I want to say four to six million dollars a year is contributed. Um, so yes, it will. It helps us because we're not going to be doing that directly, but we will be paying our share of that through the formula rate under wholesale power supply agreement with Duke Progress, but not as much. Okay. okay. Um, again, spare parts uh, goes with the station. Also during negotiations, there are various things that are that are, are variable during the year, such as every time you do an actuarial study for your pension cost. They're going to move around, and at one time, Duke Progress had, had uh, funded more than 100% of their pension costs. So we had certain caps to where they could not fund more. We did not want them to be funding it. Then all of a sudden, they get the assets back, and we can't get anything over 100% back. So we capped certain things such as that uh, going forward. In addition, if you recall, there was a, some litigation with the Department of Energy um, about dry cast storage, uh, Yucca Mountain, 
is not in operation, and we're required to have dry cast storage. And as a result, we have incurred a lot of cost. So there was a lawsuit uh, brought by Progress and us against DOE, and we have been receiving millions of dollars back from that settlement, uh, that lawsuit, over the last number of years. We wanted to make sure that we continue to get back what we put into it originally, as we had ownership. So that also is carved out, and we'll be getting those funds directly back. Um, in addition, I, I had thought and had hoped that de this deal would be closed by January 1 of this year. And because of delays by, by Duke Progress and their merger and some other things, uh, we, we have not closed yet. So Duke agreed that after January 1, 2015, any dollars that we invest in the plants for capital additions during 2015, they will reimburse us those costs. Now, they're capped during this year at $78 million, but uh, we, we're going to close this deal June 30th. And right now, I think they spent about $45 million, so we'll be getting that back at closing um, as well. Um, so that, that's the basic deal and the deal structure with Duke Progress for the asset sale. That's one contract that the agency has with Duke. The other contract we have with Duke is an all-requirements power supply agreement with you going forward, because we got to get our, our energy from somewhere since we're selling the assets back. So what we're, I like to tell people that in, in, in form, this is a 30-year deal, but in substance, it's really a 20-year deal, because we can get out completely from under this contract in 20 years, and the agency can get out from half of it uh, by 2028. So we have some off-ramps uh, that is of value to us, and if the market is such that we can replace their cost with a cheaper cost, then we will certainly do that as we approach the time frames. It is a full requirements contract. And I was, uh, right here, same priority and firmness as DEP. Let me tell you why that's in there and why we demanded that it be in, in, in the contract. Back in the 70s, when Duke and Progress, seeping out at that time, were having trouble completing their power plants, Catawba and Harris, and we ended up buying into it. Before we agreed to buy into it, they were telling the municipalities, if we have to have brownouts and blackouts, which they were predicting, then our wholesale customers will be the first ones off, and they'll be the last ones back on. So what they were saying is their direct serve customers were going to be a priority. Under this agreement, we're all treated the same. They cannot discriminate. They cannot take us off first and bring us on last, they got to treat us just like they treat their direct serve customers, which also was an important consideration going forward. One of the big deals is 12 coincident peak pricing. What this says is that um, each month, whatever percentage we are at the time of the one hour peak for that month, whatever percentage we are of due progress, that's the percentage of their fixed cost for that month that we pay. All right? Now, it's on a 12 coincident peak basis, and we have the right to, to shave our peak through hot water heater switches, through air conditioner switches, through behind the meter generation, through distributed generation. All those items we can install and shave that peak and continue to save money for the Eastern Power Agency. Right now, that one item saves the agency about $45 million a year. We will be able to continue that. And I'll say to you that we're the only wholesale customer of Duke Carolinas or Duke Progress that has this particular feature in their contract. They will not give it to anybody else. We've had it since the early 80s, and we, we demanded we, this has got to continue. So they agreed to it. But again, we are, this, is a, a, this was also a deal breaker, just like that liability was a deal breaker for us. Um, we can continue to, 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 to do peak shaving, as I said, with demand side management, uh, hot water heater switches, and so forth. I mentioned the off ramps. Um, this was important to us because a thir 30 years is a long time. Okay, 20 years is a long time too, but it's not quite as long as 30. But what we negotiated was that in 2028, we can take off half of our load. Right now, we have ownership of 700 megawatts. But we have a peak demand of about 1,400 megawatts. That additional right now is under a long-term contract with Duke Progress. So what we'll do is that in 2028, 
we got to give them uh, notice in 2021. If we want to take off that amount above 700 megawatts, the agency can take that off and go shop it around if we so want to. That's the first off round. The second is we have two separate ones to terminate in 2036. That's the 20 years I mentioned, the substance part of the contract. With eight years notice before 2036, we can get out of this contract completely. If we don't like what's happening, if their costs are out of control, if we can get it from somewhere else, we can walk away from this contract. But conversely, they are obligated to serve us if we stay. All right? In addition, with four years notice, we can take half of our load and go shop it if we want to. So again, we have some off ramps that gives us flexibility going forward in the event that, that prices get out of control. The last off ramp has to do with new nuclear. Duke has talked about building the lead nuclear facility for a number of years now. If they decide to build nuclear or buy into a nuclear facility, existing or new, or jointly build one, then they have to give us projections of what that is going to amount to, what the impact would be on, on the agency and on y'all. If we don't like the impact, we can take our share of that and go shop it somewhere else. If we can get a better deal, we'll do it. If we can't get a better deal, then we'll stick with it. But again, we feel like that negotiating a 30-year deal, we needed some off ramps and to try to you know, protect ourselves um, and, and get out early if it made sense to do so. Um, these are the contracts that we have to enter into with y'all. Now, the previous two contracts I talked about was with the agency and Duke Progress. But we've got to enter into a contract with y'all to terminate the current agreement, as I said, and also a full requirements power supply contract, as we have with you today, and also a debt service support contract. This full requirements contract basically mirrors the contract with Duke Progress in the Eastern Agency. What we wanted to do on the debt service support contract is that we, didn't, we, we, we wanted to know each year for the 10 year period that we're going to have this debt outstanding, what the annual payments were for e from each member. We didn't want it to vary with your energy consumption or your demand consumption. We want it to be fixed. So we separated it out into a separate contract and your attorneys will see that. Um, again, the power sale, uh, sales agreement is uh, to provide power to the 32 members. The contract term, again, is the same. Uh, it's a 30-year contract, but we can get out of it in, uh, uh, in 20 years. And it is a full requirements, and it is a direct, it's a formula-based rate, and it was, uh, it, those rates will be reviewed every year and based on current cost. After the fact, if the costs were different, they'll be trued up after the fact. So it really is on an on a average system cost basis from due <coughs> progress. That's the way the cost to you will be determined. Uh, which is the way that most wholesale power supply contracts are structured. Again, it will pass directly through and then will true up uh, annually after the fact. Again, the pricing is based on a, um, a coincident peak pricing and the coincident peak pricing is locked in for 20 years. The 12 CP is. Now we can peak shave for the entire 30 years, but after 20 years, if Duke Progress says we want to change from a 12 coincident peak to a two coincident peak or annual coincident peak, they would have the right to do that. But they got to tell us what impact that would have because we can get out from under the contract if we don't like it. So it, there was some give and take there. But again, we continue to be able to use our, our distributor generation and our, dis our demand side management for the entire 30 year period. Um, the support contract, as I mentioned, uh, it has the, the, the terms and conditions for each member, uh, and you'll see what the debt service obligation will be here for you in just a moment. But again, we did not want it tied to energy consumption. We want it to be a fixed cost so you would know what those were year in and year out for the 10-year period. The rate committee um, had a lot of discussion about, do we do a 10-year term on this bond deal and this debt? Do we try to stretch it out to 20 years or maybe five years? A lot of discussion about that, but everybody agreed on a 10-year term. And part of the reason was that the current debt, if we did not uh, do this deal, the current debt would be paid off in 10 years. So we felt like that was a good benchmark, 
and we stuck with that 10 year, uh, 10 year maturity. I mentioned the debt service. Call your attention down to the right hand columns, first of all, if you don't mind, at the very bottom. This column is the current debt service that the agency pays, and you can see by, by member who pays what currently for a total of $260 million. That's the annual debt service that we pay today, which is about 35% of our total cost that we charge you for wholesale power. After this deal, the debt service will be $57, $57 million, a reduction of $203 million a year for a 10-year period. That's what generates the savings for the 32 members in the Eastern Power Agency. We're getting out from under over 70% of all the indebtedness that we have. If you look, um, Edenton, your current debt obligation is about 4.1 million. It'll go down to about 900,000. Hertford, a um, little over a million dollars. It'll go down to about 220,000. Again, that's where the savings that you're going to see for the next 10 years, that's what's generating those savings for you and for your constituency and your customers. The deal itself and the economics for the agency. In order to defeat the bonds outstanding at June 30th of this year, it'll take about $1.97 billion to defeat of cash to defeat those bonds. So where are we going to get that money? We're going to get $1.2 billion from Duke Progress at closing. Also, on our balance sheet, we have about $278 million worth of reserves. Now, that's not just you know, money sitting around on the balance sheet. We're required to have those funds on the balance sheet because of bonds that are outstanding. There are certain bond requirements that we have in accordance with our resolutions that you have to have these reserves set up for bondholder protection. But once the bonds go away, those monies are freed up. So we can use it to, to help pay for uh, the existing bonds off and to make the deal come together. However, we're still $492 million short. Thus, this is why we had to have legislation was to authorize us to issue new bonds of $492 million. The debt service on this $492 million is about $57 million a year for 10 years. Our financial advisor says at the current rates right now, if we issued in, in June, we should expect that an average interest cost about 2.9%. Our average interest cost on, on the bonds outstanding today is about 5.21%. So not only are we reducing the amount of bonds that's going to be on our balance sheet, we're reducing the, the average interest cost as well. Let's get into the, the economics of, of, of the, the agency, and then I'll have a couple of slides for, for each of, uh, of the members specifically. Um, let me walk you through this, this chart. Uh, first of all, we've got a cents per kilowatt hour over time, okay? And this red line with the circles in it, that's what I call the status quo case. If this deal does not happen, those are our projections of what the cost will be for the Eastern Power Agency going forward. This blue diamond line here, this is the power uh, purchase price and projections that we're going to be paying Duke, uh, Duke Progress in order for the power and the energy to get to serve all 32 members. Now, this black squared line right here, this has that $57 million of debt service added to it. I just want to show you that that debt indebtedness is very little. It's, very, it's a small amount contributing to the overall price of power. And as you can see, in 10 years, these two lines converge because that debt goes away. Okay? So at the end of the day, you can see that the Eastern Agency, the wholesale power prices that we're going to charge our members, is going to be reducing from this red line down to this black line. That is about an 18% immediate cost of power reduction on average for the Eastern Power Agency to our membership. Significant reduction. And if you look at the first 10 years, it's a 16% reduction and a savings of almost $1.1 billion. Okay? Now, I don't want to mislead you. The next 10 years, had we stayed the course, we'd have been less than what the new deal is. 
Okay? That is about a 14% higher. But if you look at it for the entire over the 20 year period, it's still a 5% savings, over $500 million worth of savings that goes back to our membership and to your constituency. So the first 10 years is important because I'll say to you, I have a lot more confidence in the projections in the first 10 years than I do the last 10 years. Not that they are not good projections, just that things change. And, and I, I feel more comfortable with the savings that we're going to see here versus the additional costs that we, that we would see back here. Again, in the short term, $1.1 billion of savings. And even in the long term, over $500 million of net present value savings. Um, this is, is, is Edenton, okay? And you'll see that the, the, the shape of the lines are virtually the same, okay? You will have an immediate 16% reduction, annualized in the, about $1.6 million. But again, this is what we're saving, and this is what we're giving up for the long term. Overall, it's a 4% savings, over $6 million. The first 10 years, it's over a $15 million savings on a net present value basis. Again, you know, you might say, well, you know, th th this, this wipes out some of the, the savings early on, and, and it does. That's the way the economics work on this deal. However, overall, you got a lot of present value savings up front for giving up some costs in the back end, and overall, you're still 4% better off. And your debt service responsibility goes from over $4 million down to about 900000 a year for the 10-year period. Hertford, very similar case. If you take a look, the lines are very similar, the curves. Um, immediate 16% reduction. Now, I, I don't want to mislead you. That, that's not to say that, that, that you're going to pass on a 16% reduction. All right, Because this is 16% of wholesale power cost. You got to add on your distribution costs and everything else. So the percentages are going to be a little different. But also, I will say to you, you need to think about um, how you want to implement these reductions. Do you want to give it all back immediately and then have to have a rate increase year two, or do you want to give back a lot of it and save some for rate stabilization so that you can glide into the rates? Now, I don't, you know, I want to make sure you understand. This is a projection after the deal is done, costs are going up, okay? So we're not going to have flat cost. So I would, you know, would, would recommend you at least consider, take a look at how much you of that reduction you want to pass on now versus to offset future increases, okay? That's up to you all, but i just throw that out to you for, you, for your consideration. We, the word competitiveness has always been important every time I've talked to, to y'all and to other members. And th this, this basically shows what the competitiveness is. The red line, again, is, is stay the course. The black line is the deal that's on the table. And the green line is basically what Duke Progress's wholesale power cost would be to a similar type entity as <coughs> us, okay? So that, that's basically their wholesale power cost. Now, if you think about it from a retail standpoint, they've also got to add their distribution cost, their customer service, like y'all do. But what this says to me is that our wholesale power costs are going to be very, very competitive with Duke Progress's wholesale power costs in early years, but also even more competitive, as you see, in the later years. So it does a couple of things, this deal. Immediate rate relief, immediate power cost reductions, long-term benefits, but also short-term and long-term competitiveness with Duke Progress, with Dominion, or whomever is in your area. Again, I have the same, same slides uh, for Edenton. As you, whoops, I'm sorry. As you can see, uh, the competitiveness, you, you're going from here down to here. Yeah, there's still a little bit of gap there, okay? But not like it was. That's a, that's, a, that's a big deal, Anne-Marie, when you're looking at trying to recruit a commercial customer or a new subdivision that has choice. That's important, okay? Brandon, same thing with, with y'all. It's the same shape of the curves, the same analysis, 
is that you become a lot more competitive. And, you know, I'll, I'll take this any time versus that one, okay? And again, I think that that's, that, that's the economics of the deal, okay? Um, where are we? Uh, the only thing that's outstanding for this deal to be completed is the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has to authorize the transfer of the license. Our name's on the license with, with Duke Progress right now as a, as a minority owner of those plants. We, we, NRC's got to approve the transfer of that license to Duke Progress. It's not a big deal. They've been operating these facilities. It's not like a new owner coming in. Uh, they've they got to analyze. They know Duke Progress. They know what they've been doing. That We expect that on June the 19th. Uh, we received yesterday from the NCUC, the Certificate of, of um, uh, Convenience and Necessity. That has been uh, approved to be transferred to Duke Progress. So the only thing we're lacking now is the NRC approval of the transfer and the 32 members to sign the contracts and to agree to the deal. We hope that that will be done in the next um, 45 days. Uh, during May and June, we're, um, my team now, we have a lot of windshield time. And uh, it's, it's, believe me, it's windshield time well spent, though, because this deal is important to get done. Um, we are preparing the, the closing documents. Um, we, we, we have asked that all the consents of all the 32 members plus the city of Greenville to be uh, completed by June the 15th because we want to price the bonds the week of June the 22nd. Um, we want to close the transaction uh, June 30th time frame. I'll say this to you. For every month that this is delayed, it costs the agency and y'all $10 million a month to put it in perspective. So if we don't get this done, every month that goes by is $10 million that we're losing. Okay? So it's, that's, that's the, the critical part of this. We need to get this thing done as soon as we possibly can to make sure that we are seeing the savings as soon as possible. Um, again, as, as you all see your councils, commissions, when, when you all are ready to act, then this is what you will be asked to act on. There will be an ordinance that will approve the, the sale of the assets and it will be a, 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 to a, approve three things with the Eastern Power Agency to terminate the current agreement, to approve the purchase power supply contract between the agency and, and the members, and the debt service support contract between the member and the agency. So that's what you will be asked to act on as the, uh, the managers bring it to you for your consideration. We have already sent to, uh, to all lawyers, all city attorneys, I think it was a stack of papers about like that, and um, great midtime, re midnight reading, but I, I think that, that they are going through those documents to make sure they understand them. Uh, we have had a lot of eyes on these documents, believe me. Um, this has been uh, negotiated over, as Anne Marie said, about 18 months, and it has not been negotiated in a back room somewhere. While I could not be out in the public going over these economics until now, um, we did share with the public as much as we could, but we had to be in closed sessions to go over the economics of the deal uh, before it went public. Uh, part of that is, is, is uh, our requirements, but also we were in the confidentiality agreement with Duke Progress because they are a regulated utility. They're on the Security Exchange Commission. They have certain requirements they got to meet as well. So we, we, we have somewhat, our hands were tied, but also I didn't want to negotiate this in the public. It wasn't the right thing to do. I think we've gotten a good deal, and I hope you would agree with that. And I hope as um, your, your managers bring the, the documents to you that you would uh, favorably consider the, the ordinance. Um, mayors, um, I, I've probably taken more time than I should have. I apologize, but I, I'll be glad to answer any questions or address any issues that you would like. Um, or I'll go back over anything that would be of help. Sure. Graham, can you tell us why Duke is doing this deal? Yeah, um, Duke has, uh, there are a couple of things. 
uh, first of all, uh, Duke in their documents to the, to the FERC, to the FERC, um, they basically said that the economics that are driving the deal for, for all their customers is that they can take 500 megawatts of nuclear energy, which is about 25% of coal cost, and blend that in to their overall generation mix and provide savings to everybody. Okay, um, And they have indicated, I think, that that's about $70 million a year, I believe. Can you uh, help me? Because I'm... So they're taking the value of the nuclear, mixing that with the rest of their the generation, rest of their generation right. and that helps them save. Their, their, their average cost right now is say, say three and a half cents a kilowatt hour for fuel cost. With blending this nuclear in, it can bring it down to about say 2.6 to 2.7 cents a kilowatt hour and that's spread to all their customers. So that's where, you know, their customers are not being hurt. Um, they're not receiving the value that we are because we're getting rid of the debt. And well, we have access to the, to the, the cheaper generation and, and their average system cost to date for about 35% of our energy. But um, the, the big deal for us is getting rid of that debt. Okay? So they have stated publicly in their filings that um, that, that is the case. All right, now, you know, I, will, I will say also that, and I'm, uh, this is not speaking for Duke in any way or Duke Progress, but you know, I, I think that that any utility in today's marketplace would like to grow their balance sheet. Would like to grow their generation portfolio in any way they can. And I think they see this as an opportunity to do that with some very good assets. They've been operating <coughs> for all, all these 30 years. So I think those are the two things, Amory, that, that's probably driving them. But I think it's the economics more so. Thank you. Let me ask one question. Say, for instance, after 15 years, one of the programs want to get out. <clears throat> okay, at that time, we are able to submit information to let them know that we want to leave the power. Mm -hmm. now, once we get out, and say we're out for four or five, maybe six months, we find out that where we were trying to transfer to was not a benefit to us as we thought at the beginning. And trying to get back in, do we come in along with the group we left, or do we come in as a new group and the rates and everything else change? I, I, think, I think you would negotiate either way. I think you would have the opportunity to negotiate back into Eastern Power Agency, or you could go it alone and have be a, a single standalone wholesale customer with Duke. Now, you know, Duke, uh, that they would, they would have the, um, the option of serving you or not, okay? Um, yeah, depending on what their load requirements are at the time, what their reserves are, um, they may or may not want to. Uh, so the price that you get might not get be what you would want, okay? So you, I think you would have an option to come back but I think the price is what would be the determining factor. The, thus, I think that the importance from my standpoint is that it's a 20-year contract for us, but it's a 30-year contract for Duke Progress. And to me, that, that's a value right there. Graham, this doesn't necessarily pertain to the deal, but uh, what happens to the original bondholders? Um, they get issued the new bonds at a lower rate. They go get no, sir. They, the, the 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 bonds that are outstanding today. Um, what we will do is we will issue 1.97 billion dollars of bonds. I mean, we we got 1.97 billion dollars of bonds to pay off. Right. June 30th of this year. Okay. Now all of them are not callable. So what we'll do is what is callable, we will pay them off. Okay. But what's not callable is we'll set up an escrow to pay the interest until those bonds are callable. But the bonds that we issue, the $492 million, those are new bonds have nothing to do with the current indebtedness. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Edwards? Again, Graham, on behalf of Hertford and Edenton, we appreciate the time you've spent with us tonight um, offering your insight to 
uh, the quality of this deal and the benefits that will accrue to our customers. Um, again, congratulations on a, a tough uh, project to work your way through, but hopefully it'll be accomplished here at, at the allocated time that you just showed on the slide. And um, with that, um, Mayor, Mayor, if I can, thank you very much sure. for allowing. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to be here. Okay. So. May I have one question? Absolutely, absolutely yeah. Uh, Duke is going through a little problem with coal ash. Mm -hmm. Will this affect us in any way? No, so under under the long term contract that we have with Duke, uh, Duke Progress. Uh, if, if, if Duke Progress' system has some issues with coal ash, then we would, it would go into our formula rates, but we would not be directly responsible for the 200 megawatts of coal fire generation that we have ownership in today. So the, the amount that we would be responsible for is significantly less than we would be responsible for if the coal ash was a problem at Roxborough or Mayo. Okay. So we, we, we will be paying a little bit in our, in our formula rates, uh, with, with cleanup for Duke Progress's coal ash, but not as much as if there's a problem with, with Roxboro Mayo. What happens if they have another one? Um, <laughs> they're they going to they have to clean it up. They're going to have to clean it up. And then we'll be on the hook to pay a higher rate like they're... We, we, if, if, if there's an issue with one of the units... Uh, one of the coal-fired units on Duke Progress's system, then yes, sir, that, that cleanup will go into our formula rates as it would go into all their rates. So that, that to me, part of the beauty of this deal is that from a competitive side, if our cost goes up, theirs is going up too. All right? Whereas today, that's not necessarily the case. All right? So uh, to me, that, that's, that's part of the value of this. So the of case today is if their cost goes up, it's their cost. It's not our cost. Well, if, if the cost goes up for our stations, that's our cost. But the coal ash isn't our cost. It can be at Roxborough and Mayo. We have 200 megawatts of coal fire generation. So it, it can be. That we've been doing it right, I'm assuming. We have been doing it right, and also that there, there are issues. We have been doing it right. I mean, we need to lay the cards on the table before the cards off yeah. to clearly answer his question. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that, um, that there will be some calls for coal ash in the future. Um, those costs, we have a projection of what those costs are, and they are built into these numbers. Um, uh, and, and I think that, that there are very good projections. And that, that has been based on what Duke Progress has negotiated, Duke Carolina has negotiated with the General Assembly, if you will, and what will be required. Well, the good thing is we can be we can be entered into the the question of the uh, rate increase or whatever, but we won't have the liability. Yes, sir. That's correct. That's the big item to me. That's correct. Get rid of the liability. It's liability on, on the on the coal side, but it's also that it's a liability on the nuclear side. But let me if I, can I take one more second, Ms. Mayors, if you as don't mind. As much as you like. Yeah. Um, and Anne Marie and and Brandon will remember this. Um, we retained a, a nuclear expert to, and we have had him on, uh, on retainer for the last number of years to help us review the operations of, of the nuclear facilities that we have ownership in, both agencies, both at Catawba as well as Harris and, and um, uh, Brunswick. And he has helped us through this deal as well. And at the Board of Commissioners meeting, he was asked specifically, would you do this deal? And his response was, absolutely. And let me tell you why. At some point in time in the future, there will be a new, another nuclear accident somewhere in the world. Maybe not in the U.S., maybe not in Japan, but somewhere it will be. And when that happens, our nuclear cost goes up significantly. Fukushima has cost us millions and millions of dollars. And all of our eggs are in that nuclear basket, or most of them are. So the next nuclear accident the cost of Brunswick and Harris is going up. Whereas under this deal, we're being served out of their average system and not specifically from those nuclear assets. So uh, to me, that, that risk factor and that risk mitigation is important in addition to the decommissioning long-term risk mitigation. 
And that has happened historically with uh, Chernobyl and Three Mile Island. No doubt about it. Did impacted yes, our cost in the agreement that we're in right now. Yes, sir. <clears throat> but be forewarned. If that does happen, they're going to go up on our prices too. They, they will, but I mean, but our prices would not go. It's not going to be the, the oh, what? end all, of, the be all, the end all. I mean, it's not going to be, and it's a great deal. I mean, I I think it is, but I don't want people to be fooled that everything is going to be, oh, you know, just cherry pie now. It's, it's you know. Mr. Bezos, I agree a thousand percent. And and one thing that we've tried to do through this whole process is is to manage people's expectations, and um, sometimes it's tough to do when people see numbers and they. Well, I want mine, and they expect that they're going to get free power, or they expect their rates can go down by 50 percent. That's not going to happen. Um, what I can say to you is that, that I think the deal uh, gives us some protections. It gives us some rate relief immediately and some long-term benefits. But you're exactly right. If there's another nuclear accident, um, due to progress, costs are going up, which means our wholesale prices will go up, but not as much as if we had all of our eggs in that, in that nuclear basket. Uh, to me, that's the difference on that scenario. Am I understanding right? If they do go up, and they're going to go up, mm -hmm. if we just had it, I don't know, if we didn't sell, that price is going to be shared by, let's say, 100 people. Pick it If it happens with Duke, it's going to be shared with 1,000 people. Exactly right. Bingo. Bingo. So everybody's going to have to pay, but we won't pay as much. Yes, sir. Exactly right, sir. Great way to look at it. And here's the thing. This is something that we none of us ever thought we would see happen. Let's face it. We never thought we'd see this happen, and it has happened. I'd rather be looking and good. <laughs> <laughs> Mayors, again, thank you all very much for letting me be here. And, and, and once again, I want to thank Brandon and Anne Marie. Thank you all very much for all your work during this process, okay? We wouldn't be here without you, so thank you. You're very welcome, and uh, thank you, Hood, for auditing the session with us. Um, Eden and Council, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Eden and Town Council meeting adjourned. Heard for Council. I entertain the motion. So moved. I'm sorry. This meeting there is adjourned also. All right. Thank you all again for coming over and being with us, Graham. Um, good luck with the closing on this thing. We'll be there to help you in any way we can. So uh, look forward. When air conditioning season rolls around, I'll be paying a few less dollars. <laughs> okay.